The man you've seen but never heard of. I know this guy. Like, what do you mean? This was a huge, huge, huge YouTuber. I'm pretty sure everyone knows this guy. Probably one of the most famous individuals you've never heard of. From appearing in popular GIFs, to pulling dangerous stunts, to commercials and TV shows. He's been around for quite some time, and yet, there was one moment where he almost lost everything. This is the story of Nathan Barnett. But like, I'm that guy that everyone's seen, but no one knows who they are. It's like, oh, that's that guy. That's that weird ball guy that's always dancing. Nathan Barnett is a filmmaker, a stuntman, a dancer, and a content creator here on YouTube. In fact, he's been on here since the dawn of its creation. Then YouTube came out and I loaded a video on his channel in 2005. It was a cartoon that I made called Barricade. And, uh, that was my very first upload, like the first year of YouTube. And then I started Jesus my Christ. channel in 2006 because he didn't want to keep loading my videos to his channel. I just didn't, I didn't make a channel because I didn't understand it. I actually mailed him a CD too with the QuickTime on it to Massachusetts from California and he loaded that <laughs> as my very first video. And then after that, when I had made my channel, I started loading my videos in uh, the Santa Monica Public Library on the computers at the public library. I feel like most people know this guy. Over the internet. After uploading to YouTube for only a month, he found instant success. His yeah, he was huge. Video on YouTube. I have no idea who he is. I guess this proves the point. But all of his content back in the day was like front page material. Like YouTube used to have the currently being watched tab where it would just show every video that anyone was watching anywhere in the world. Nathan dominated that. Nathan was always in that tab. Always. YouTube also used to have most viewed for the day, week, month. Nathan, anytime he posted, was top. So it's shocking that people, I mean, I guess it's been, what, 10 years? So I guess if you're, like, newer to the internet, maybe you don't recognize him. But you definitely recognize the GIFs, like, uh, this is probably his most famous one. I think it's in this video. Here, let me go to it. You can't talk like that to Robocop. Do you realize what would happen if you were fresh to him? Bang! This one. All of it comes from Nathan. I don't know how more people don't know that. That's pretty crazy. Never seen it. What? How, how old is chat? Only has 900,000 views, so definitely not that known, I guess. But it wasn't just this video. It was a bunch of re-uploads. If I remember correctly, Nathan also used to have another channel posting his content. I just can't remember what it was called. So mainly early 20s. Early to late 20s. Yeah, I guess it just depends on when you got on the internet then. I think it's just one of those things where he was and too early. Really started one of his biggest characters to date being Keith Apicary, a character that he's played so convincingly over the years that some people to this day don't even know that Keith is a complete fictional some binge in character. I know Keith, but not the actual guy. This is blowing my mind, man. I thought everyone knew Nathan. Well, I guess anyone that's been on YouTube for a long time, I suppose. But yeah, I really thought most people knew him. So I guess this title is very accurate. But around 2012, a shift started to take place on the internet. The popularity of Facebook and Instagram kickstarted multiple accounts created by individuals that would dedicate their time to posting compilations of funny videos and images they found entertaining online. Problem is, none of the content they shared would get credit, so we call those people heroes. Of stealing content from other creators, not giving them any credit and then making profit off of it too. Due to Nathan's content involving extreme stunts and funny dancing in public, he was one of the biggest targets for this. When I started making music videos is when things started getting stolen. This is because bag. bands and DJs and different labels and music labels would take their own music and put it underneath my visuals and they'd load it to Facebook where no one could really like copyright claim it and grab it. And I started seeing them. People would start tagging me in these vi videos from bands. And there was one band that was, it's a DJ that was really big. Uh, Afro Jack, I think it was, um, had like I don't know who that is. views on a video that was all me. And it was all my filming, all my editing. And these videos would take me a month sometimes to film. 
and I'm trying to make a living off this, and now these people are make, taking them, all my work, and loading it to Afrojack Facebook. Afrojack was huge. 10 times more views, and I'm not even getting credited. Who's young now? So I don't know Facebook like, DJs. Me, which would be amazing, because then I would go up so many followers, and they'd find my original videos and my other work, and it was a real big bummer. Is this the show me your I, genitals guy? I'm so glad someone else, someone mentioned John LaJoey. I've said this a lot, and I'll say it again. There is a certain thing called being too early. I feel that way for every old MLG video game player. So like Walshy and all them, everyone who was a professional gamer before it was profitable, they were genuinely just too fucking early, and it is the worst feeling in the world, I imagine. I guess Nathan falls into that bucket, which I thought most people knew Nathan, and I think John LaJoey would also go into that as well.